Hi there my magical star beings, this is Psychic Siren Tarot and welcome to the channel. In today's reading we're going to be taking a look at what have they realized about you for the person on your mind. We have three piles to choose from. For pile number one we have the golden cat's eye heart. For pile number two we have the blue cat's eye spear. And for pile number three we have green opal. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to pick a pile, pick whichever one you are most drawn to. So hopefully by now you have picked a pile for yourself. If not, you can pause the video. Once you're done picking a pile, please find the timestamps for your pile in the description box below and then I'll see you at your reading. Hi there my pile number ones, if you chose this golden cat's eye heart, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what they have realized about you for any person on your mind at all. Please be aware that this is a general reading, only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you do find yourself resonating with these messages, then please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to book a personal reading with me, bookings are open at the moment. I'm taking my last bookings for November. After that, I will be taking a break from personal readings. So if you don't want to miss out, please find my email address in the description box below. So your card that you chose is Sweet Treat and when I was pulling cards for the intro this card actually came out with it with Reed in the reverse. So let's pull your last oracle card and we'll see what we can read from these three oracle cards and then after that I will take a look at your tarot cards. So what have they realized about pile number one for the person on their mind? What have they realized about them? We have health checkup. And we have soak in a bath at the back of the deck. So I feel as though what this person has realized about you, this person has realized how sweet you are, how you always check up on them, how you always check up on like their emotions and if they're feeling okay mental health wise. That is what I'm picking up on just intuitively but if you have been working on your health a lot recently like physically or mentally then that could be something they have realized but for a lot of you here I'm basically picking up like you always make sure this person's okay like let's say they're having a bad day or they look a little bit sad or they look a little bit stressed out or angry or whatever emotion they're feeling or you think they're feeling like you always check up on them to make sure they're okay and this is something they've realized about you that the reason they realize this about you is because not many people do this for them not many people check up on them to make sure they're okay not many people genuinely care about how they're feeling and how they're doing like you do so they've come to this conclusion that you're a very sweet person with a heart of gold, pile number ones. You're always giving to this person in a way that shows your love. Your actions show how much you love them, not just your words. And that is what I'm also getting here. With sweet treat, perhaps some of you could literally bake a lot for this person like let's say you cook a nice meal for this person or bake for this person to show your love you know that could be for some of you whereas for others of you maybe you have an acts of service love language where you love to do little things for the people you love or you just show this person how much you love them through your actions through the things you're doing for them through the effort you're putting in and it seems like whatever you're giving them comes from a genuine place of love. I'm also seeing something about thoughtful gifts, like you giving them thoughtful gifts. And it doesn't just even have to be like gifts on their birthday, but just like unexpected surprise gifts that they didn't expect, like I said. Um, so I'm seeing that for some of you. But either way, this person is just realizing that you're a giver and that you just love to give and that makes you a very sweet person. With Reed in the reverse, I'm picking up energetically that you could 
just know these things without needing to research them. So say, for example, let's say your friend is going through something um, and this person sees you kind of take care of that friend and be there for that friend emotionally. It's like maybe you say certain things to that friend that help them with their emotions, but you never read up on that topic or you never researched about that, but you just know the right things to say. Or let's say you do these things for this person, but you never like, say for example, you make uh, you bake something for this person, but you never had to read a recipe to do it. You just did it on your own. Or say, for example, you're giving this person advice. It's just coming from your heart. That's not coming some from something you've read or researched. So that's kind of what I'm getting here. It's like you have your own intelligence and wisdom that just comes from the heart. Like, you know, the right things to say to people that just come from the heart, that don't come from things you're necessarily like just regurgitating, um, like regurgitating books, if you get what I mean. It comes from the heart. It comes from what you truly feel about that person. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here. So let's say you had to buy this person a present. It's not like you would necessarily research like, let's say, for example, someone here has a boyfriend and you want to buy him a present, but you're not necessarily researching what what are good presents for men. You just know what he likes based off paying attention to him. So you didn't have to go and do research on, like, what a man wants or likes because you know him. You get what I mean? That's the kind of vibe I feel from Read in the Reverse. And with health checkup, um, maybe some of you are taking care of your health, are trying to find balance with, you know, eating healthy, taking care of your health, yet also treating yourself sometimes at the same time, since we have sweet treat here, you know, finding a balance between the two of them. And with reading the reverse, it's not even necessarily something we have to research on. All of us know what we need to do to take care of our health or our mental health. And so you're just taking that action without overthinking it and overthinking it to the point where you research too much. I, I hope that makes sense. I know learning is an amazing thing, but for you, I feel like you're not overthinking the information you already know. Or like, let's say you are intuitive and you get an intuitive message. You're not like overthinking the information that's given to you. So this could be what this person is realizing about you. Let's get into your tarot card so that we can understand what's coming through here more. There's also something about, you know, doing self-care and making sure that you are continuously checking up on yourself and your own emotions. Like, let's say you're feeling quite burnt out. You know, you'll do some self-care. You'll make sure you rest. You're always checking in with your own body and your own emotions to make sure you're okay. Um, and that's kind of what I'm feeling here. But there's also something about cleanliness. Maybe you have for somebody here, you have a stand, a certain standard of cleanliness and hygiene you like to keep up with. Um, so say, for example, you like your house to be cleaned in a certain way. Um, and when it's not cleaned in a certain way, it makes you feel some type of way about it because you like to clean it in that way and it's efficient for you. Or let's say you are very like neat and tidy as a person where you don't like to see like a mess or anything like that or you don't like to suck on your hygiene routine because you know maybe it will make you feel like you're not showing up as your best self or your most presentable self so there's something about like always being presentable and neat and tidy and even like the way your environment or home or office looks or whatever it is, it's like always neat, tidy and organized and you like it done that way. So Spirit Guides of Pile number one, Spirit Guides of Pile number one, what have they realized about Pile number one? You have the Temperance card in the reverse, you have the Knight of Wands, 
What have they realized about pile number one? You have the judgment card. What have they realized? Oh my gosh, this card just fell on the floor. And you have the Ten of Cups. I feel like pulling one more card. Um, I don't know if we have the space. One more card for what they've recently realized. So we have the Two of Wands reversed. Okay, so what I'm seeing with what they have realized about you. You just know things without without having prior facts or knowledge on a subject or situation you just know things so you could be very intuitive and i'm actually seeing that within the cards um because the high priestess wanted to pop out with a page of pentacles behind that and that kind of matches up to what i was saying earlier where you don't have to read up on a topic to know about it like something about your intuition just knows or like, let's say you had to meet a person, you don't really have to go through that process of getting to know them. You just know what they're like immediately. Immediately as you see their energy, you just know what they're like as a person, who they are in their character. Let's say you haven't done much research on, on what you want to do in terms of a decision you make. But you just already intuitively know what you want to do and your intuition aligns with the facts of a situation. Your intuition aligns with things that are already there that you have no way of knowing. So maybe some of you are tarot readers and like you say something in a reading where you have no way of knowing that. But then when people check out the facts and they try to like check if that what if what you said was true they see the facts match up and align to what you said um so that's what i'm picking up on or let's just say you just talk about a situation and you're not a reader and you just have a strong intuition and you're saying something but you have no possible way of knowing that personal information but then when somebody facts checks what you said you were correct without even doing prior research on the situation so that's what they have recently realized about you. There is something about getting impatient, but not because you are quick to react, but because you are a little bit more meticulous as a person. You like things done a certain way. And for you, you create a certain routine for yourself. So for example, let's say I'm washing the dishes. First, before I wash the dishes, I need to put away the dishes that are already dry so that I have space to put the new dishes to go into. But if I were to not put away those dishes that have already been dry, you know, it would just create this whole mess and things wouldn't go in the correct order. And then I'd have to like go and put the dry dishes there and it would just create this like unorganized mess, right? Um, Let's say we use that as an example. Maybe you're like that, like you like to do things in a certain order and sometimes you get impatient, but it's not because you are quick to react or quick to judge a person, but because you want to show them a way that, a method that works for you. And even if it doesn't work for them and they have their own way of doing it, you just care about people and you care about this person where you want to show them your way of doing it because maybe you think it could help them be more efficient and be more organized and be more meticulous, if that makes sense. Because maybe they make little mistakes here and there that they don't necessarily see and maybe you know how to do that specific task or thing and you're just trying to teach them your way of doing it and maybe it helps them. But you're not necessarily thinking my way or the highway if that makes sense like that's how this person's viewing it um in their realization like you're just trying to help them with something they're maybe inexperienced with so for example i'm using the dishes situation but take it out how, how it resonates maybe some of you are a manager or a leader and there's somebody you work with where you're trying to show them um a way of doing something that is efficient 
And maybe at first they didn't understand, but now they're starting to get why you showed them that way of doing it and why maybe their method had its flaws in it. Um, their method wasn't wrong, but maybe it had flaws in it where it wasn't as efficient. So that's kind of what I'm getting as an example. This person has realized about you that you're not an indecisive person or the type of person that doesn't know what you want. Like, you know what you want, you know what decisions you want to make. And again, even if you don't have any knowledge on the decision you're about to make, you just trust your gut and your intuition and you know what you want. So even if you make a mistake in decision or you make the wrong decision, you do learn from it, you know, eventually at the end of the day. So there is nothing wrong with it per se. Um, like you don't necessarily overthink your decisions, like I said before, because maybe this person's the opposite of you and they're learning more about you, trying to understand you better. Um, maybe they do something different than you, where when they make a decision, maybe they research on it first, maybe they overthink it first, they think about what would happen if I make this decision, what would happen if I make this decision, but it's basically kind of draining for them because sometimes they doubt which decision they should make at the end of it all because they've overthought it so much that now things are starting to get foggy and they don't make sense anymore. I hope that makes sense but that's how I'm seeing it from this person's perspective like sometimes when they overthink their decisions too much at the end of the day now they're just even more confused than they were at the start um, because maybe they ruminate over decisions. So with you, it seems like you know what you want and you just go after it. And maybe you plan and everything like that, but you don't seem to overthink your decisions or at least how this person's seeing it. This person has realized that you are somebody that likes to have a lot of fun and you make time for the pleasures of life for family, for having fun, you know, going out with this person, doing fun things, but you want to make sure everything's done first. So, for example, let's say you have an exam coming up and you're like to this person, I can't go out this weekend, but I can go out with you next weekend after my exam because I first want to focus on this exam. Or let's say you have a lot of chores to do today, and you're like, I first want to finish all my house chores and then we can go out later tonight. Uh, because if I'm going to go out with you, you know, I'm going to stress about the things I never did and not be able to enjoy it as much. Um, so maybe I'm seeing something like that where you are like a fun person, but you like to get things done first. You like to make sure all your tasks are done first before going and having fun if that makes sense so take it in whatever way resonates with you but it's like let's say you have work to do and you have a whole to-do list to do and maybe you don't want to like put off your to-do list by going out and having fun with this person because the whole time maybe you'll just think about that to-do list and what you're not doing on there um so maybe for some of you like there's like a little bit of a feeling of like being a little bit OCD but I can't necessarily diagnose anybody but I heard OCD in my mind um so yeah I just I just feel energies and I hear things so I can't diagnose anybody I'm not a doctor um but maybe someone here agrees maybe someone here has been diagnosed with OCD um and then I also see that you can be quite emotionally balanced like, you can be quite calm, but when things aren't in order, then it makes you a little bit uneasy. Um, or when things haven't been done, it makes you uneasy, like, unable to relax. I'm picking that up for somebody here, so take that with whatever way it resonates with you. You're also not quick to judge. Like, you like to give people a chance to prove themselves or to better themselves um you like to believe that people have their own way of growing and have their own decisions to make and even if they make what you would consider a wrong decision or a decision you wouldn't make you understand that maybe they 
perceive things different than you. Maybe they want something different than you. And even if they are making a wrong mistake or decision, um, you understand that we can always grow from that and learn from that. So that's what I see here. There's a sense of community whenever they're around you. They feel free whenever they're around you. So that's what they've realized. You always make them feel free. You always make them feel fulfilled. Um, something about the feeling you bring them is very rare. That not a, not, not a lot of people bring them that type of feeling. There's something about them feeling comfortable around you. Like they can just be themselves. And they just feel loved by you. They, they really do. They feel fulfilled in this connection and that's what they have realized. That there's not a lot of people they feel this way about. So they realize something about their feelings they are having towards you and how rare that is that someone could make them feel that type of way. So this is what I have for you. I do hope this reading resonated with you, pile number one. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pile number twos, if you chose this blue cat's eye sphere, then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what have they realized about you for any person on your mind at all. Please be aware that this is a general reading, only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you do find yourself resonating with these messages, then please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to book a personal reading with me, please find my email address in the description box below. I am taking my last bookings for November. After that, I will be taking a break from personal readings. So if you don't want to miss out, you know what to do. You have the card connect with your ancestors. I'm going to pull three oracle deck, three oracle cards from this deck. And then after that, I will be pulling some tarot cards with this. Um, so when I got to your pile, I heard the word abstinence and this won't resonate with everybody, but maybe somebody is abstaining from something. Like, for example, maybe you are um, going on like a six week detox from alcohol or um you know smoking maybe somebody is taking a break from smoking or quitting smoking um maybe somebody is taking a break from junk food maybe somebody is celibate at the moment for spiritual purposes uh, whatever it is, I'm 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 hearing something like that for somebody where you're really serious about this or maybe somebody's on a juice cleanse or on a health diet or some kind of fast for spiritual purposes um, where like this person is realizing that you're serious about this thing for somebody here that won't resonate with everybody. So let's pull the rest of your cards. So what have they realized about pile number two? All of a sudden when I picked up your deck, so my window's open like right next to the, the table here and I picked up this deck and then the wind was like kind of pulling the curtain out, which makes me feel like that's a message because then the light started shining in the room on the side. So maybe this person's realizing that you kind of like pull them towards you I mean, you kind of pull them towards you with your energy in some way where they feel like very pulled to you and drawn to you in some way. And it feels like they can't stop it or control it. Um, it feels like something is leading them towards you and you bring a lot of light into their life. And that's what I'm getting from that. So what have they realized about pile number two? We have music. What have they realized about pile number two? We have this card that I can't say. Okay. So maybe somebody is abstaining or celibate at the moment. And we have connect with your womb at the back of the deck. So maybe somebody is doing like a womb cleansing or spiritual cleanse to do with the womb. Anyways, if you're not, maybe some of you are connecting to that sacred sensuality that you have and learning to be comfortable with expressing that side of your sensuality, sensuality, right? Um, where maybe you're getting more comfortable with like your body and like the way you look and 
the way you speak to yourself and the way you view your body. Um, maybe for some of you, you're going through a sensual awakening where your sensual energy is kind of like rising up to the surface and awakening. Um, it's reminding me of like, I'm being shown the divine feminine um, energy, like rising up to the surface and you finally getting in touch with your pleasure. Like for some of you, I see that maybe you had some kind of trauma preventing you from connecting to your sensuality in a in an empowered way or maybe for others of you it was like you had some kind of shame around that like I can't show up in this way because of shame or whatever it is like maybe there's some blockages you're releasing around that and you're really connecting to your sacred sensuality and realizing it's part of what makes you human it's part of what allows you to create here on earth because when you think of the womb space or even the males, um, it's a point of creation, it's sacred. So we often as humans are taught to be shameful of that, but really it's sacred, it's something beautiful um, that all humans have, you know what I mean? So with music here, maybe there's something about your music taste that this person's starting to get to understand. Like, let's say you and this person have two completely different types of music tastes and maybe they didn't understand your music taste at first but then let's say you send them a song and they really listen to the lyrics then it feels like they're starting to understand you and your mind better like let's say you and this person listen to music together and you play a song or you send them a song it feels like they're sort of analyzing each word of the song to try and understand you more to see if there's a deeper message behind the song in what you would relate to from that song. So there's something about that coming through. Maybe some of you make music or are very musically gifted. Maybe for some of you, like you sang in front of the in front of this person and like this person realized you have a beautiful singing voice. Maybe for others of you, this person realized that you have a melodic voice and a very beautiful voice. Um, so something about that's coming through for others of you. With connect with your ancestors, I felt as though there's something about being similar to a family member or having um, physical similarities to a family member. So let's say, for example, this person recently met your mother and then they're like, oh, it makes so, so much sense. Like I can see some traits that are similar with this person and their mother or their father, or I can see like you have your mother's eyes or whatever it is like there's something about that coming through whether it's your mother your father grandfather grandmother whatever it is um where this person's realizing you have certain similarities to certain family members whether that be physical or um personality traits this person is realizing how spiritual you are how connected you are to the divine to your sacred purpose um, I also feel like for some of you, there's a specific situation I'm picking up on where you always felt like this person um, only called you up when they wanted something from you. So um, I'm hearing like, I'm not going to be like your scapegoat anymore. I'm hearing I'm not going to be the one you use anymore. Um something about that's coming through for somebody and I'm picking up on a specific situation or scenario here where like maybe a woman's watching this pile and this guy always called you at 2 a.m for a booty call and there's this there's this feeling of like I'm not gonna be your booty call anymore or something like that I know that sounds weird but I'm seeing that or I'm seeing like a situation where Maybe you felt used by this person because they only uh, they only message you when they need something from you or they only message you like to talk about themselves and maybe you are s seeing how selfish they are and how like 
this is not for everybody, but like for somebody here where maybe you saw how this person was like using you in some way, shape or form or like they only went out with you when you had money and then wanted to like wanted you to pay for them all the time or something like that. Like I'm seeing something where maybe this person wasn't respecting you and just taking from you or maybe you were always there for this person emotionally, but they weren't there for you. And maybe they're realizing that you've realized like their true intentions for someone here like you're not gonna um fall for their tactics anymore like maybe they've realized how selfish they were or how they didn't necessarily give back to you or reciprocate um or took you for granted for somebody here there is someone that has realized how energetically protected you are because there's someone that has done you wrong and this is a different person or energy I'm picking up on now. Maybe for you, there's multiple people coming through here. So just take it as resonates. But I'm picking up on a different person's energy here where maybe they did you wrong and they know they did you wrong. Um, and they found that they got really bad luck after that. Or they found that they lost some type of happiness after that or lost something after that. And it's it's like they're realizing it was their fault because I'm hearing it's all my fault and I'm feeling shame within the sacral chakra for, for them like shame and guilt and like remorse um but the thing is I don't think this person would have felt that same regret if they didn't get their karma which is quite interesting as I tap in I also feel like for some of you there is a person in your life that has realized how much you have grown in some way, shape or form where they're literally seeing your growth um, by the changes like you've had recently. Um, so say, for example, you always used to accept a certain type of treatment. Now you no longer do. Now you set boundaries. Say, for example, you used to partake in a, in a certain type of activity but now you no longer do because you realize like I don't feel aligned to this anymore um something like that like there's this change in your behavior that has made them realize your growth because there's something you used to do that didn't serve you or some kind of pattern you had that didn't serve you where you no longer do it or you no longer engage in it or partake in it for some of you, it's like, I'm no longer engaging with toxic people that only hurt me. For some of you, it's I'm no longer engaging in bad habits. For others of you, it's like, I'm no longer engaging in gossip, whatever it is. Like, there's something about that where there's been a change in your behavior that has resulted in this person realizing your growth because you were quite different before. So you have the Knight of Pentacles showing up first. What have they realized about pile number two, please? We have the Emperor in the reverse. When I pulled the Emperor reverse, I heard the song by... Who, who sings it again? Miley Cyrus, I Can't Be Tamed. Um, but the Emperor reverse usually is like a very controlling person. That's how I read it. Or a person that abuses their power in a relationship where maybe there's a, um, a power dynamic that is unhealthy and the seven of swords is reverse here so this is like somebody that doesn't take accountability this is somebody that always gets away with the negative things they do or the deceitful things they do but now they're no longer getting away with it so um, maybe there was somebody that always used to walk all over you and now you're no longer letting them get away with it. This is confirmation of what I said here. Or let's say somebody always used to have the upper hand and be controlling over you. And you didn't like do anything in return because of maybe fear. Um, but then now you're no longer letting them control you. Or let's say there was somebody that always like did something to you over and over again and thought oh they're always gonna forgive me because I do this thing over and over again and they never leave and then one day you actually turn up and leave because 
you're fed up and it was your last straw. So I'm picking up on an energy like that where they thought they could get away with it, but they didn't. We have the Two of Swords reversed. And you have the Nine of Cups reversed. Maybe this person has... Maybe this person has realized that you no longer accept the things you maybe accepted in the past. The things you never saw as an issue in the past are now an issue to you. And this person is realizing that you've grown. You've, you, you've grown a backbone in some way. Like you're not letting people walk all over you anymore. You're not letting people treat you any way that they want to treat you anymore. Like you're demanding respect now. And if they don't want to respect you, if they don't want to respect your boundaries, then bye bye there's a door. <laughs> I'm seeing that scene from um, Scream Queens when she's like, bye, there's a the door or something like that. I think it's Scream Queens, but I could be wrong. Uh, so it's like maybe you're cutting people out of your life that don't respect you, that don't respect your boundaries, that keep doing things and apologizing for it, but keep doing it anyways where they never change, where they never grow and you're realizing that maybe you saw the best in them and maybe you had this like want for them to become that version of them that you saw them being like their potential. Maybe you're somebody that sees the best in people and you give people the benefit of the doubt but I'm hearing fool me once, shame on, shame on you, fool me twice, blah, 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 fool me three times, shame on me. So it's like, if a person keeps repeating the same pattern, you realize it's not a mistake, it's a pattern and I'm going to remove myself from the situation because as much as I see your potential, as, as much as I see the good in you, as much as I want you to grow and I have hope here, I'm not going to be made a fool of. I'm not going to like just stick around for bad treatment um, out of seeing the best in someone. I'm not going to put on rose-colored glasses or ignore red flags anymore. So um, this person is realizing that they didn't get what they wanted out of the situation, that maybe they expected you to like continue being at their beck and call, I hear, or continue letting them walk all over you or continue to get away with things they maybe got away with in the past that you never saw as a problem in the past. Now you're seeing it as a problem. Maybe you did see as, see it as a problem before, but maybe you didn't really give this person any real consequences. Um, and they avoided accountability because the devil in reverse is popping out, which is avoiding accountability for me, like based on my view of the tarot. Um, and this person is emotionally unavailable and I think this person is realizing that they were wrong about you. Like they thought you had no backbone. Um, they thought you were just going to let them do whatever. They thought you weren't going to make any decision to cut them out or do anything because for a consistent amount of time, like they were getting away with this. But now the tables have turned, like you did something unexpected. I'm seeing, you know, somebody play chess and make an unexpected move where the person was maybe studying every move they made and trying to detect what move they'd make next. But then they made an unexpected move. move um, and then that person realized, whoa, I'm losing now. So maybe this person was playing games with you. Maybe they were quite manipulative. Maybe they were quite observant in a way, but tried to almost like observe for weaknesses. I think this person, whoever's energy I'm reading, um, even if I'm not reading the person on your mind's energy, whoever this is, they come across to me as a little bit narcissistic because it feels like this person almost studied you to like use your weaknesses against you or to get what they want out of the situation it feels like they're a little, little bit manip manipulative in nature couldn't say that word all of a sudden it feels like they just try to get what they want out of a situation and don't care about how other people feel and it just feels like they thought you were going to continue being around 
even though they never like showed up in the best way for you. And I think what they're realizing now is they were wrong about you. It's like this person saw this as like a weakness of yours, but now they're realizing they were wrong about you, which is quite interesting. To be honest, I don't like this energy. I don't like this person's energy. Um, I'm glad you stopped letting them treat you like this. And I'm glad you walked away or set a boundary or put them in their place because it just seems like this person took you for granted, if I'm going to be quite honest. And I feel like you deserve a lot better, pile number two. And I'm glad you're just, you're realizing how much you truly deserve. So this is what I have for you. I do hope this reading resonated with you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi there my pile number threes. If you chose this green opal crystal then this is your reading. We're going to be taking a look at what have they realized about you for the person on your mind. So please be aware that this is a general reading. Only take what resonates, leave the rest. If you do find yourself resonating with these messages then please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also if you'd like to book a personal reading with me I am taking my last bookings for November. After that I will be taking a break from personal personal readings. So if you don't want to miss out, you can find my email address in the description box below. So your card is take a walk. And when I pulled the cards for your intro, there was actually another card that came out with it. I forgot to put it here. We have positive affirmations. But when I pulled the cards for the intro, I heard the song hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more. So there is somebody you've walked away from with Take a Walk. That's how I'm reading this intuitively based on the song I heard. There's somebody you've walked away from. There's somebody you're saying like goodbye to, goodbye to forever because you love yourself more. As you can see, I love myself. And it took a lot of bravery from your side to realize your worth, to realize that you deserve something healthier than this person is giving you in terms of love. And it feels like your intuition told you to let this person go, told you that this person's no longer worth your time or energy because maybe they just drain you. Maybe they don't bring you peace. Maybe they just take away from your happiness and don't add to it. So maybe they don't help you grow. Maybe some of you outgrew this person and realize, you know, this doesn't serve me anymore. Um, maybe I used to enjoy this connection, but it just doesn't serve me anymore as I've outgrown them. Um, so there's somebody you're saying hit the road to, hit the road, Jack. Okay, so that's quite interesting. So what have they realized about pile number three? We have sync with the moon. So there's definitely something about you getting in touch with the deeper side of your emotions um, to do with the heart. Getting in touch with your heart and what your heart is telling you to do. And your heart is guiding you to what your intuition, what your soul wants you to do, what your soul thinks is best for you in the moment. Because the moon is a very spiritual energy. It connects to our intuition. And since both of their hands are on their hearts and we see a moon over her heart and third eyes here, I feel like you get your intuitive messages from the heart space. Some people get intuitive messages from their third eye. You know, you get it from your heart space. And um, this is something I've like intuitively known because I like get messages from my heart space. But then it was recently confirmed for me when I watched like one of Lexi the Leo's videos. I love her channel. And she spoke about like how in one pick a card, she spoke about how like some people get their messages from the solar plexus, some people get it from the heart. And I feel like you get it from the heart. Um... So anyways, yeah, I feel like there's something about you just getting in touch with your intuition and trusting your intuition more. And we have make an altar at the back of the deck. So maybe some of you are praying more. Maybe you're connecting with the divine more. Maybe you're meditating more, doing spiritual practices that help your growth, that um, just help you feel more at peace and more in sync with yourself. 
Um, I feel like maybe some of you are on a hermit journey of learning to be okay with being alone or being alone with your thoughts and still feeling grounded while doing so. I feel like you're learning to find that internal peace and if you've always been a peaceful person, you're just learning to grow that peace in a way where nothing can take away that peace. Even if you had a stressful day, even if there are external circumstances that almost feel like it's stealing away your peace, you're learning to remain grounded within that sense of peace where nothing can steal that peace away or change how you feel. So maybe you're learning to find emotional balance and to feel emotionally okay regardless of external situations or external chaos happening around you where you are completely like, what's the word? Where you are completely like in control of your reactions and not letting things bother you so much. One thing I recently had to learn, which probably I'm part of this pile because this is just something I'm channeling and something I'm hearing like for you when I say these words. Um, one thing I learned recently is like not to let people anger me because sometimes I'll let like something somebody says get to me where my whole day is ruined because of that one thing that person said that was so rude. You know what I mean? And I've realized that why am I letting one person ruin my whole day over something they said where I was peaceful before, but now I'm not because of that one person? Why am I giving away my power? And it's not about running from your feelings, but it's about learning to be in control of your reactions. And I feel like that's exactly what you're doing, which is why I'm mentioning my own personal experience. Um, because this is like what I'm hearing from spirit, like you're, you're becoming in control of your emotional reactions and finding a grounded sense of peace where nothing can change how you feel on the inside if you get what I mean. And I feel like, yeah, you're getting in touch with the divine. You're getting in touch with what your heart truly desires, with what your intuition really desires. Maybe some of you are on a journey of self-love and, you know, saying positive things to yourself instead of negative things. Maybe some of you are doing things for your mental health that help you feel more at peace and help you feel just more great about yourself if that makes sense like even if it's taking a walk when you feel stressed out and listening to music you know those are all forms of things that we can do to help ourselves feel better mentally so maybe you're doing that maybe some of you are journaling maybe some of you are practicing meditation or patience um, maybe some of you are spending more time out in nature maybe some of you are doing like rituals um, like morning routines and rituals that help you kind of ground for the day. Um, there's something that you're doing spiritually or physically that's helping your mental health, that's helping you kind of just feel more at peace if that makes sense and feel more in love with life. You're falling back in love with yourself and back in love with life. That's what I feel. So this is what this person's realized about you. What I'm also seeing um, in these cards is all of these women here. Well, we have Mother Earth here behind her with like stars in her hair. Here she has stars in her hair. Here she has stars in her hair. So maybe this person is realizing how much of a light you are to them whenever they're experiencing dark moments, like you're always there for them. With her hand over her heart space, I feel like you're very in touch with your heart. You're always there for others. You always try to be compassionate and empathetic and you always try to connect with your heart. Even when it comes to people that maybe don't deserve your forgiveness, maybe some of you are learning to forgive and let go and instead send love to that person instead of anger or negativity. That's what I feel for some of you. Take it as resonates. I just saw someone got their palm read recently um, and maybe this person's realizing those things you told them about the palm reading are actually true. Um, like maybe you got a palm reading or an actual reading and like you told this person about the reading and they're realizing well that's true. And there's also something about how much you shine and like how 
you're in touch with you're getting in touch with your shadow and your light and you're bringing harmony to both i don't know if this person's quite spiritual but these messages are coming through in a very spiritual format if they are not a spiritual person then this could be their higher self sending them these realizations but maybe not in such like a spiritual way if you get what I mean, where they're having certain thoughts like this, but maybe not in spiritual words or spiritual format, but like in a way this person can understand it um, so that they can understand you better, if that makes sense. So spirit guides of pile number three, spirit guides of pile number three. What have they realized about pile number three? We have the five of wands reverse. So this is exactly what I was speaking about, like not getting quick to anger, not getting quick to react, not getting quick to let things steal away your peace or your happiness, finding self-control when it comes to your emotions. Even if you feel something, it's not about ignoring those emotions or stuffing them down. We can honor them in other ways, but it's about like not letting that emotional reaction hurt another person by our feelings so sometimes you know how um let's say i'd never say this if i was in the right mindset but if somebody pushes me to anger that i actually say something mean to them then you know i'm letting my anger be in control of me instead of being in control of my own emotions and that's what i feel like you're controlling for some of you we have the ace of wands reversed what are they realizing about pile number three? We have the five of swords reversed. What are they realizing about pile three? We have the eight of cups reversed. This is exactly what I spoke about when I mentioned hit the road, Jack. I love when I read oracle cards and then I hear like specific messages and then the tarot cards kind of like confirm it later on because the eight of cups reverse is about like wanting to leave something behind but not being sure of it at first. But I feel like since I heard the word, since I heard that song hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back, I feel like for some time you've been like, thinking about leaving a specific person or situation behind where maybe they weren't respecting you as much as they should have and maybe that person is realizing that you've been pondering leaving for a long time that maybe you have been um, feeling resentful of this person for a long time of all the little things they did to you that kind of built up with the five of swords reverse maybe this person constantly self-sabotaged in your connection maybe they did little things over and over again that built up in resentment for you where you're like it built up so much where you're like I can't take this anymore this is not healthy for me you know um, maybe you are realizing how a person makes you feel like getting in touch with your feelings in a way where you're noticing how certain people make you feel whenever you're around them and you're like I don't want to feel this way I notice that whenever I'm around this person I feel this way so maybe they're just not good for me you know what I mean um and I don't say that every person that makes us feel a certain way isn't good for us but maybe you are like in that mindset of I don't want to be around people that always make me triggered and angry and always like get me to argue or fight with me fight with me or fight with them I don't want to be around people that constantly make me feel this way about myself or about life or whatever so I'm removing myself from the situation I thought about it for a long time I've pondered about it like if it's best to leave or stay or just wait for things to change but eventually you decided it's best to just leave because like I said, Eight of Cups Reverse is about pondering about leaving but not necessarily being sure because you've invested so much time, energy and you have a certain amount of feelings or emotions towards a person. Uh, so it's like you've invested that into the relationship and you don't just want to throw it all, all away. And that's how I see the Eight of Cups Reverse. But eventually it's just like I can't take it anymore. I can't deal with this anymore. So that's what I see. And you have the star. 
Um, these cards kind of just came out like when I held the deck in my hand, like they kind of just popped out. So we have the Three of Swords. We have the Seven of Wands reversed. And we have the Queen of Pentacles reverse. So I'm hearing you are right. So this person could have been quite defensive at first when you brought up certain things to them about why you were leaving them behind. With the devil at the back of the deck, it seems as though they didn't want to take accountability. This pile is extremely similar to pile two, but it has its differences. So if some of you are from pile two, then, you know, it could be similar energy. But anyways, if you're not, that's okay. If you weren't drawn to pile two, that's okay. You don't have to watch it. But I'm just saying that this person didn't want to take accountability. But I don't necessarily feel like this person being as bad as pile number two's person. Because this person, I feel like when I'm in their energy, they're realizing that you are right. Um, so when they were defensive, it's not that they were wanting to gaslight you or not take accountability they weren't doing this consciously that's what I want to say pal two's person was like manipulative and narcissistic yours isn't yours is just like a person where maybe you and them had like a toxic relationship where this person didn't mean to hurt you over and over again but somehow find themselves doing it and when you brought it up to this person about how much they hurt you with the three of swords they got defensive and they didn't want to accept how much they hurt you because they didn't want to think of themselves differently it's an ego thing of like I don't want to think of myself in this way I don't want to think I'm like this so I'm not going to believe you because I don't want to think I'm like this, um, which is really weird to say, but this is a subconscious thing. It's not like they were consciously thinking, I'm going to be defensive to not take accountability, but it kind of came up because it feels like for them, they got defensive because they didn't mean to hurt you. And that's what they just realized about the situation that they didn't mean to hurt you. And that's why they got defensive because they didn't want you to think that they were intentionally hurting you, if that makes sense. And maybe they're realizing you were right about everything you said to them before you left. With the star, it seems like this person's realizing you're healing from whatever happened in the situation with them. And with the queen of pentacles reverse, maybe they're realizing that they didn't value you as much or didn't appreciate you as much when you were already in their life. Maybe there's something about I didn't put enough effort in. Maybe I didn't try hard enough. Maybe I didn't like see the signs that pile number three was getting fed up and wanted to leave. And maybe we were both toxic for each other, but we didn't want to be. Maybe we just hurt each other unintentionally, but we didn't want to. And that built up over time. So I see this person realizing that about you, whether this is true or not, this is like their thoughts on the situation. Um, and as I'm in the energy looking at the tower cards, it kind of feels like, you know, when I'm looking at the cards, you know, when you're crying and you're looking at like a piece of paper and the words start getting blurry, I'm seeing that as I look at the cards, but I'm not crying. I don't have any tears in my eyes. So it's like the cards are starting to get blurry as if I have tears in my eyes, but I don't physically. So maybe this person is like reading past messages between the two of you or looking back at past photos of you or looking at something and then their eyes are starting to tear up because they're realizing how much they've maybe hurt you and how much they regret it. Um... And I think they're realizing that you don't want them back in your life. Whether that's true or not, they think that. Okay, so this is what I have for you. I do hope this reading resonated with you, pile number three. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.